In the first episode of this series, we covered the setup and creating our first GUI. However, this wasn't dynamic. So today, what I want to cover is building out a GUI that covers an array of widgets, but also allows for some dynamic logic and input. So as you can see here, this is what we'll be creating. We'll have an input box, we'll have a submit but button, and we'll actually have a corresponding action that when we submit a response into our text input box, it displays on the screen like so. So we're building a lot on what we've done in the first episode and also potentially building a lot on what you've done in sort of isolated Python scripts. We're building again and looking at displaying this within a proper GUI in a more sort of modern and real world way. As before, we're going to have two files and I've set this up as we did previously in the same directory as my virtual environment because I want to run off that and I'm selected with that interpreter. If you do need to revisit that, you can see in the episode before how I went around setting that up. Now, we'll also have our Python file and our KV file. Um, you can feel free to copy this code verbatim. I'll go into the naming conventions to link these two files and why that's been chosen shortly. Now, the Python file will handle the backend logic of which there is some more now, and the KV will essentially bring this all to life on the screen, supplying the design much like CSS would. So let me explain what's happening here. And it doesn't need to make sense immediately, hopefully some more will when we map it to the KV file, but some of this may not make sense for a few episodes. I didn't want to directly go into just segmented widget and layout tutorials. I wanted to start off by showing you what's possible even with a basic knowledge whilst covering a core layout in Kivi and also some key widgets. So essentially we start off by importing our fundamental classes. So first of all, uh, we want to from kivi.app import app which is just uh, the base class for Kivi applications. And we also want to import the box layout because this is going to be the layout that we're using right now and it arranges the children in a horizontal or vertical box. Very modern design, especially for mobiles. And we'll look at the vertical layout here. So initially we create a custom class, my box layout. And all we're actually doing here is we're basically providing the logic for submitting that button and what happens. So on submit self defines a method within our mybox layout class. And this will be called when the submit button is pressed. The text input is equal to self IDs text input. What happens here is it just retrieves the text input widget with the ID text input using the IDs dictionary. Now, input text, this line here, receives the text entered in the text input widget. And you get the point. Essentially, through here, we're just building up that logic to have a successful functionality when we submit the text input using our button. We're connecting everything together. Now, the class myApp defines a custom class that extends app class. So this is the actual application class that represents the Kivi application itself. And when we use the build self, this overrides the build method of the app class. Now this is called to build and return the root widget of the application. Don't worry about some of the terminology here. And then return my box layout returns an instance of the my box layout class as the root widget of the application. And then essentially we just run the application from there. So what we're doing here in simple terms, and as you can see when we run this, there's nothing on the screen yet because we've just defined the logic around creating our app, running our app, and the logic around submitting the button with that custom MyBox layout class. So we can go ahead and save that. And you'll notice I also have the my.kv file. Now, you may wonder why it's just called my.kv. Well, essentially this core app class, my app, um, we've, we've established that within the main.py file. And we've saved the my.kv file in the same directory. But in order, the best practice for the kv file to pick up the link or the mapping between the Python file is to take that core app class 
and just take the first part, so the first word, which was just my for my app, and change it to lowercase, and that should work. We will look at more intuitive ways to map the files, but that is standard behavior, so I just thought important to cover that. So you can copy the naming convention here, create a directory or folder, um, and we can link the two by copying this naming structure. So now we're actually going to look at taking what may have seemed initially complex, hopefully as the series involves, it won't seem so complex as back-end Python logic, but we're going to bring this to life on the screen. Essentially, the MyBox layout within the angle brackets will define the rules for the MyBox layout class, which matches the custom class we defined in the Python code. Now we're just going to set the orientation, uh, the spacing between the children widgets and the padding, nothing complex there. As we did before, Everything's a widget in this sense, so a label is a widget, and this is how we render text. We're going to give an ID for later mapping. Uh, we're going to supply the size hint Y of none, which disables automatic vertical size hint of the label. We'll understand a bit more about this later, and a font size. And we did a text input that follows the same logic, but we, we will give this a manual height as well. So what we will do is set the height to 48 density independent pixels. And as you can see, when we run this code, we now have a text input. We can't do anything with it, but it's important to understand we've now looked into another widget, of which there are many widgets, uh, more widgets than we're obviously showcasing here, such as file pickers and some more complex widgets. But these are really the core ones that we need to get our head around now. And we're looking into our first layout, which is the box layout, as I said, popular for mobile development and a lot of modern GUIs. So now what we want to do, we need to enable a button widget. And this is going to provide us an ability to execute that press logic that we want to display our message on screen. So we can provide a text to prompt the user, which can just be submit. This will place over our button, a size hint of none, and a font size here that we can specify or change. And now we have a button and a text input. And we have that automatic blue highlighting when we click the button. However, we still can't display that message on the screen. We can move things around, look at this sort of dynamic resizing and scalability of the application across devices. But we still need a way to essentially reflect that message on screen to align with our Python logic. So what we can do now is we can set the uh, the on release property uh, for our actual button submit, and we can set that equal to the root dot on submit. And what will happen here is we are now able to run our application, and when we go ahead and input some text like test here, we now get that text rendered through our label. So things are starting to connect now. We've got test or Matador software, uh, and we can look at sort of how we could potentially resize that and view it. That padding and spacing allows for a nice sort of central vertical stacking. Uh, and without too much configuration, the box layout is very good for that because right now we're just assuming one column. So that's perfect. Now, we can go ahead and actually amend and customize this for a bit more understanding around how we actually really look into some of the design elements and make things look a bit better, some alternative ways of styling and rearranging uh, our window that we're running. So we can actually specify button here, and this will just provide rules uh, for the, the button widgets that we have. So potentially, um, we would have many buttons and we could sort of define um, almost a global rule set to govern those buttons by. So we'll give that a save. And as you can see here, we're specifying essentially RGB uh, and alpha values to give this a bit of a, almost an opacity um, to make the a sort of darker gold color, to make it look just a bit more modern. So we can already start to... Uh, greatly advanced some of the other sort of Python GUIs you may have seen like uh, tkinter um, and look to make things that look really crisp and modern. I'm not saying that gold submit button is but from where we've come from in one episode it's quite an advancement. Now we can also use the the size hint properties if we want to uh, to look at um, that almost that automatic sizing 
um, and we can set that proportionate um, to the layout with values between 0 and 1. So feel free to play around with that. Um, obviously the Y reflects the vertical height and the X would uh, obviously constitute the width. So if we have 0 0.6, that would just be over half the screen. Uh, we're not going to focus on that too much right now. And in a lot of cases where you need to be a lot more specific with GUI or application development, you just want to actually set that height um, within the pixels on the screen because it's a lot more precise in the way that you can work. So we can go ahead now and run that again. Uh, we've got a smaller button and again we can adjust the height like I said uh, with regards to the actual pixels and get something that's a bit more palatable, refined um, and easier to, to read essentially. So now we can go ahead and sort of end the tutorial there with a nice message on the screen. Um, and essentially, we've come come a long way in two episodes. We've now actually got a bit more of a real-world test case here, uh, taking a few widgets, an actual layout now to structure our widgets, um, and some dynamic functionality. So that Python code looked a bit intimidating. Hopefully, it makes more sense now with the mapping. Feel free to take that away, play around with it. And then the next episodes, we'll build on some more of these layouts and widget concepts, and we'll work towards our first project or real world application. Thank you very much, and feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share.